I want to welcome everybody today and thank you guys for coming down. Uh, as you know, this is an unusual moment for CCIM, the Georgia chapter. I'm Kirk Rich. I'm this year's president. And one of the things that we wanted to do this year is to have a couple of off-site meetings. As most of you know, we usually meet at the terraces up in the Perimeter Center area. But today we decided in, at the um, very uh, hospitable moment with the Metro Atlanta Chamber, uh, they've invited us to be here to sort of get a feel for what they do better uh, and to also let us know how we can better utilize their services and what they do for us. Because I think sometimes those are missing links with uh, what we do day to day. If we understood more what these folks do and the folks that are in your different uh, regions that are chamber oriented, uh, you'd be shocked at the number of tools that go unutilized. So this will be a great day to learn that and also to hear about what's happening in the metro region. So I'll introduce Greg in a minute, but I want to give you a couple of uh, quick pointers on what's going on with the Georgia chapter. We've had a very eventful uh, couple of months. We just finished up this, the first class this year in Atlanta, which is the 101 class. Uh, that is the first class to start the designation, most logical one, and we have another one coming up in August. So if you have anyone that you know that wants to get involved and wants to start that designation, now's the time to try to get them to plan their calendar so that they have that week off. Uh, and that is August 17th through the 20th of this year. So keep that in mind. Next uh, class in the series of classes, though, is coming up April 6th through the 9th, and that's the 102 class. And as most of you know, and the visitors in the room, if you don't, we are an education-centric group. We uh, provide a designation. That's what these red pens are all about. It says that we went through a, a fairly involved process of uh, four or five classes, and then also have a fairly significant book of business to show that we are pretty much experts in our world. It's a quasi-masters in commercial real estate. Uh, the next thing is we have the Chicago meeting, the end of this month, which is only a week away, which is the national meeting where we have several national representatives and people that are on the national board. Uh, Bill Adams, Les Callahan, and a couple other folks in the room will be attending. They're attending as actual directors, national level. Uh, and then I, and my, set myself and a couple of the local directors will be there just to help out and to, to be watchful of what's going on on a national level. Uh, then we also have the regional meeting, which is a little unusual. It's a beach meeting, which we don't have a lot of beach meetings in our world. Uh, it's the Alabama chapter hosting in Destin, Florida. So very uh, confusing, but fun. And Nancy Donaldson is heading up part of the Georgia group because she is a winophile, a very smart winophile, by the way. Uh, that is a second career for her, if not the first. And they're actually going to be a wine festival there that weekend. So it flows perfectly. Um, with the meetings. And the meetings will be uh, coming up in April. And that meeting is April, I think, 16th? Yeah, 16th through the 18th. And then the weekend fun. So there's several of the Georgia folks going down. And if there's any Georgia folks that want to go down and are unsure of where they want to stay, let me know. And maybe the Georgia chapter will host a condominium where we can all stay together a two or three bedroom condo. So I know there's a couple of us already going and I'll make those arrangements on our behalf. Uh, then we also have uh, the ACBR, Atlanta Commercial Board of Realtors Spring Fling, which is coming up May the 20th. And we are a big supporter because we are a part of the Atlanta Commercial Board of Realtors. And I serve as a director on that board because of being the president of the chapter here. Uh, and we're, we have decided, as we have in the past, to be a sponsor of that event. So we'll have some tickets available, but I urge you to go. It's May the 20th from 5 to 8 at the Sweetwater Brewery right here in Midtown. And then the last thing on our schedule, which is pretty important to the folks that are designees, that are using the tools that we provide, on the website there's the new site to do business, Retooled. And we are going to have a very in-depth, full-day program to retrain Re get your talents flowing the right way on how to use that and make it work for you. I think a lot of us probably don't utilize but 20% of it. This will teach us how to get to 100%. That, that particular class is going to be June the 11th, and it'll be from 845 until 4, so a full day at the Atlanta Commercial Board building up in Sandy Springs. 
So if you want to do that, um, please visit the website. Always visit our website, and you'll find all these events, places to register, etc. And then today, during the meeting, feel free to tweet. Our Twitter handle's there, and it'll be roving, and also on Instagram. And uh, we are really making a push to become uh, more diligent in our communications virally. So please get out your... We will not be upset if we see you on your handhelds today. Uh, last but not least, and this is really critical, we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, instead of naming each one of them today, we have a lot in the room. Uh, we have a slide that basically thanks each of you. Without you guys, we would not be here today. Uh, your support makes a lot of difference to us, and we hope that you'll continue that support next year and, and beyond. But if there's anything we can ever do for you, let us know. And from a membership standpoint, please utilize those sponsors when you have things going on. Uh, example, Bob McDonough, I'm using him right now for a commercial inspection. And it all came about because he's involved with our chapter. Uh, and he's done a fantastic job, by the way. Uh, and then I also want to say one word of thanks to a gentleman in the crowd that drove all the way from Albany. He's a member, a designee. And Bill, do you want to stand up? Where are you? Ah, there you are. He, he told... I, yeah, he, he, oh, really? So he's from Valdosta. All right, both of you guys. These are members that are... You know, we're a state chapter. And we always have that scratch our head moment. How do we not make this look like just a Metro Atlanta chapter? So when you guys drive up from that far away and from outside of what is our metropolitan area, thank you. That means a huge amount. So, <laughs> All right, to keep us on track, we are now going to start our program. And Greg Simon, who is really the, the man who knows all about business development, and gets involved with site selection and the things from the Metro Atlanta Chamber's point of view, is going to be our speaker today. He has a great program. He's been involved with things like the Mercedes. Uh, if you haven't heard about it, Mercedes is coming to Atlanta, uh, beyond the car, um, car dealerships. But he is, uh, was very involved in that and many other um, large tag type corporate relocations. And that is kind of his wheelhouse here at the Metro Atlanta Chamber. So it's just a natural that he would be the one to put forward our program. So, Greg, it's all yours. Welcome to the Metro Atlanta Chamber. We're really happy to have you here. And I'm, I'm really excited. I'm always excited to have an opportunity to talk about what we all do at the Metro Atlanta Chamber to help our business climate and to increase our gross domestic product and to create jobs in Metro Atlanta. Um, you've come at a really interesting time in the sense that about a year and a half ago, we went through a leadership transition. Uh, uh, we brought in a new president, Hala Madelmog. Uh, Hala had been the CEO of Arby's and comes from the private sector. And in the year and a half that Hala has been here, she's made a number of changes that, uh, you know, uh, we haven't completely restructured everything that we do, but we kind of got under the hood and evaluated what we do really well, or if there are some areas where we can improve a little bit. And so the purpose of my conversation uh, today is to kind of walk through what exactly we do at the Metro Atlanta Chamber. My hope is that when you walk out of the room, you'll have a good feel for what we do on the big picture side to, to help the business climate in Metro Atlanta to make us more competitive. And then on the very tactical side, what we do in the trenches day to day to convince companies like Mercedes Benz USA to relocate their corporate headquarters here. Uh, and, you know, we're very much a team at the Metro Atlanta chamber. I'm uh, happy to have a lot of my uh, teammates here in the room today. Maybe if uh, you guys could just stand for a minute so that, uh, you know who works for the Metro Atlanta Chamber that's in the room, so that maybe afterwards, as you have any questions uh, about what we do, if there's something that you're dying to ask but don't get a chance, feel free to ask uh, any of my colleagues as well. So with that, what, it, what is the value proposition of the Metro Atlanta Chamber? What, it, what is it that we actually do in this building and, and influence outside of this building? I kind of mentioned two areas, the, uh, the tactical area and then the, the big picture area. So I'll, I'll start with, in, the, in terms of the big picture area, it's all about public policy. It's about creating the product. 
in Metro Atlanta, making sure that we're positively influencing the key factors that would create a desire on the part of employers to locate or expand in Metro Atlanta Chamber or in Metro Atlanta. Uh, no surprise to you, transportation, education, water are some of our top three issues. Uh, so being an advocate for the business community, you know, we are the voice of the business community in Metro Atlanta, in the State House and in City Hall and in the local governments across Metro Atlanta. Uh, on the tactical side, I'm part of our economic development group, and uh, my colleagues that, that stood a moment ago are part of the economic development team as well. And, and we are all about working with companies that are already in Metro Atlanta to help them grow and create jobs, and to convince companies that aren't here yet to move here and invest here in facilities and creating jobs here. Uh, about three years ago, we implemented a, a business plan called Forward Atlanta to help guide the economic development work that we do. And historically, much of our focus had been on the recruitment of new companies. And we're still doing that, and we always will do that. But under this new plan three years ago, we have more of an emphasis on working with existing employers and also working with entrepreneurs so that, you know, uh, Microsoft didn't move to Washington State. If Microsoft was created in Washington State and grew in Washington State, we want to create the next Microsofts and Googles here in Atlanta. So we have a significant emphasis on collaborating with the university system here and with all of the, uh, the incubators and co-working spaces and accelerators that are here in Metro Atlanta and assisting the startups themselves. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in a little bit. When this plan was created three years ago, you know, keep in mind we were just recovering from the recession at that point. Uh, you know, we, we had lost a lot of jobs, development had stopped, and then fast forward to where we are today, and we've, we've come out of the recession, there are cranes up around the area, uh, we've recovered all of the jobs that we lost during the recession, and we're projected to add almost 80,000 new jobs this year in Metro Atlanta. Our unemployment rate has been declining. We're at 6.5%, and it's projected to continue to decline. Uh, however, we're still above the national average. The national unemployment rate is about 5.5%. So, you know, a lot of what we're doing at the Metro Atlanta Chamber is figuring out, you know, why do we lag behind the rest of the nation? You know, why are we, why do we have a higher unemployment rate? And so uh, I'll, I'll get into talking about what we're doing about that. So, you know, our, our, our vision is to position Atlanta and, and turn Metro Atlanta into a world-class region. And so we look at five aspects of what we do to help us accomplish this goal of becoming a world-class region. Uh, the first area would be job creation. And again, as I said, we, a big part of what we do is business recruitment. And, and we've had a lot of success, you know, going back, uh, I've only been in Atlanta for eight years, but uh, going back to, you know, prior to me being here, UPS relocating its corporate headquarters from Connecticut, Newell Rubbermaid coming here, uh, NCR coming here, now Mercedes-Benz USA coming here, you know, Certainly, business recruitment has been a, a very successful area for Atlanta, and we're going to continue everything that we're doing to have more companies like that relocate their headquarters here. But we're also going to have more of a focus on helping the entrepreneurs, and not only the entrepreneurs, but uh, the established companies, so that we're calling on uh, you know, the companies like Global Payments that are here or... Uh, you know, who, whoever the existing employers, to make sure that they're aware of every resource to help them grow from the university system, creating the talent pipeline, uh, co-op programs or internship programs that they have available, any uh, financial support from state or local government in the form of tax credits or uh, discretionary incentives or job training assistance. 
uh, connecting them with local governments to solve any local issues that they may encounter as they try to expand, whether it's, as, as I'm sure you can all appreciate with your clients, navigating through the local permitting process, or uh, I've, I've learned more about sign ordinances than I ever thought or, or would have cared to have learned in my time here in Atlanta. So job creation is certainly a big focus for us, both on the existing employer side and recruiting new companies. The top issue that I hear about as I'm working with companies is the workforce. You know, we can offer the best financial incentives of any state. Uh, we can have, uh, you know, the best real estate available. But if the workforce isn't here in Metro Atlanta, the companies simply won't come. Uh, we need to have available talent. We need to have trained talent. And we need to have competitively priced talent. So as I'm working with companies that are evaluating multiple cities, it's often the case where a company is looking at Dallas, uh, Nashville, Raleigh, Atlanta. I spend a lot of time with companies to understand the labor pool in Atlanta. And that entails um, everything from meeting with the university system to understand the talent pipeline, uh, meeting with existing employers with their heads of human resources to understand their experience recruiting talent, uh, bringing in human resource recruiting firms to validate that the, the talent is here. And the, the good news is that because our unemployment rate is higher than the national average, uh, that helps. That, that's one aspect of having a high unemployment rate that's actually good news. Uh, so we have been able to successfully validate that we, we have an excellent talent pool in Metro Atlanta. The fact that General Motors can come and put a thousand person innovation center in Roswell and ramp up to that thousand people in one year's time uh, really says a lot about the depth of our technology workforce and sends a signal to other companies across the world that, that we've got a great talent pool in Atlanta. So. I can't say enough about the importance of the workforce and our focus on making sure that we have a, a pipeline of talent in Metro Atlanta. Global connections. I mean, we, we constantly tout Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, uh, the largest airport in the world based on passenger volume. We have the most direct domestic flights of any U.S. airport. We're in the top three or four of direct international flights, depending on the year and, and routes being added or subtracted. So making sure that we continue to be a leader in global connectivity through our airport, and the, the fact that we have five active runways and the airport has plans to build an additional runway, our new international terminal, which was built to be doubled in size, uh, efforts to make investments in additional parking at the airport, and creating an office market around the airport as well. Uh, we have a lot of excitement uh, and, and pride in our airport, which ties into the, the infrastructure, uh, the roads, the bridges, the, um, the ports. So we, we've heard so much about the, the Port of Savannah, and uh, you know, Kirk recognized you know, your members that are coming from outside of Metro Atlanta and we've had such a focus in Metro Atlanta on the Port of Savannah, even though that's outside of Metro Atlanta, but we recognize the connection and the linkage and the dependence upon our key sectors in supply chain and distribution with the port and with the, the widening of the Panama Canal and the, the bigger ships that are coming in, the importance of dredging the Port of Savannah to accommodate that, and then uh, having Metro Atlanta benefit from those infrastructure improvements. But more specifically to infrastructure improvements in Metro Atlanta would be the, the road network and transportation. And our public policy group uh, is working overtime these days uh, in, in the state house to pass a transportation bill. You know, our, our goal was uh, funding annually of one to one and a half billion dollars in transportation for upgrading roads and bridges. Uh, Although we would like it to be higher than that, we're realistic in what we think that uh, is achievable. And we believe that one billion to one and a half billion annually is achievable. And so the, the House passed a $1 billion uh, transportation package 
now we're working very closely with the Senate to see uh, what we're able to accomplish there. And the, the last uh, of our five buckets would be the, the business-friendly environment. And this is an area where, where Georgia is in really good shape. I mean, we've been ranked by a number of publications like Site Selection Magazine and uh, KPMG does an annual ranking of states for business climate. Georgia routinely is the best business climate or close to the best business climate of any state in the U.S., but we think there's always room for improvement. Uh, as a, a transplanted Yankee like myself coming from Massachusetts and New York, where taxes are high, regulations are high, utility costs are high, unionization is high, uh, you know, I recognize there's not a whole lot of room for improvement in Georgia's business climate uh, because all those factors that I just mentioned are very low and very business friendly here. Uh, we're constantly finding ways to tweak legislation at the chamber to continue to keep us uh, at the top of the list and to de defeat any laws that might be harmful from a, a perception of Georgia. An example of that, I would say, coming from Boston, the life sciences industry, the, bi the biopharmaceutical industry is so strong and deep in Massachusetts and in Boston. Uh, when I arrived in Georgia, one of the, the big tasks was to attract an, an industry show called the Bio Show to come to Atlanta. And the, the state worked very hard with the Atlanta Convention and Visitors Bureau, and we were able to convince this industry show to come to the World Congress Center, and it attracted 25,000 you know, of the leaders from the biopharmaceutical industry for a week in Atlanta. And that week that they were here, the state legislature decided to pass a bill banning stem cell research in Georgia, which signaled to that industry, uh, we really don't want you here. So that, I would put that at the top of the list of my examples of, you know, uh, of legislation that, that might not be so good for our business climate. So, you know, I, I mentioned that we have come out of the recession, and when you look at these indicators, including our gross domestic product, uh, recovery of jobs lost, expenditures in venture capital, uh, investments in our entrepreneurs here, uh, tracking exports from Metro Atlanta, all indicators are improving, and we're doing good, and the Metro Atlanta Chamber is working in all these areas. Uh, within venture capital and working with our entrepreneurs, we work very closely with the Technology Association of Georgia and the Georgia Department of Economic Development about eight years ago to create an event called Venture Atlanta, which put 20 to 30 entrepreneurs on a stage in front of investors to pitch their business plan. Now that we're in year eight of this event, we typically attract 700 to 800 investors from all over the world. And companies that have pre presented at Venture Atlanta have secured over a billion dollars in investment. And that's pretty remarkable for Atlanta. And, and that's one example of what the Metro Atlanta Chamber is doing uh, to influence these key factors in our economic growth and in the growth of the gross domestic product in Atlanta. I mentioned that our new leadership has looked at some of the ways that we operate at the chamber. And one change that we're making is we're going to be tracking the results of what we do a little differently. I think, you know, historically, our focus had been exclusively on job creation. You know, what can we do to influence jobs? We weren't necessarily looking at what are the types of jobs that we're creating and how does that narrow the gap uh, between, uh, you know, we have very low wage earners in Atlanta and very high wage earners, and we want to close that gap and all towards improving the gross domestic product. Uh, we are going to be working with a, a software tool called Implan to track a number of these factors with the companies that we're working with to look at not only how many jobs are we creating, but what industries do those jobs represent? What are the average wages of those jobs? What is the capital investment that the companies are making that are growing in Metro Atlanta? And 
so what this slide represents is that showing that in 2014, the Metro Atlanta Chamber, we worked with 64 companies that will create over 8,000 jobs in Metro Atlanta. And when we plug that in, into our model, looking at uh, the direct jobs that are created, the capital investment, there's a, there's a multiplier effect for each of these companies. And we can see that there are lots of indirect jobs that are created for every direct job created. And when we run it through our model, you know, we can see what the total economic output is for these projects that we work on, showing that although the 64 companies that we work with are investing $1.3 billion and creating over 8,000 jobs, when you look at the total economic impact of that, that's influencing over $2.7 billion in economic output. So this, this gives you a flavor for the, our change in thinking and how we're going to be tracking things a little differently at the chamber. And this is going to help us to kind of refine where we're spending our time and where we're investing our time to help the economy grow in Metro Atlanta. And in terms of where we're investing our time, we've identified several growing, fast-growing technology sectors that Atlanta it already has strength in, or we have the foundation to be very strong in these areas. Uh, areas like financial technology, cybersecurity, mobile technology, health IT. When I think of the financial technology cluster in Metro Atlanta, I think of companies like NCR that are here and Global Payments, WorldPay, uh, but also companies like Ingenico um, and Verifone that make point-of-sale devices, First Data. Uh, but there, we have several emerging companies in this area also, companies like Paymetric, Income. Um, there are some startup companies at the incubator at Georgia Tech. So when we look at these industries and using financial technology as an example, we have an ability here at the chamber to bring those industries together, create events to get the industry, the businesses, speaking with the university system, speaking with state and local government, speaking with our chamber, so that we can come up with initiatives to help that industry grow. We can identify certain policy initiatives that are specific to financial technology that we can influence in the state house. We can identify industry trade shows and events uh, within financial technology where we can go out and market Metro Atlanta and have a presence. We can identify startup financial technology companies that are already here and see what we can do to influence to help them grow. And so I, although we haven't done that with financial technology yet, <clears throat> we're, we're embarking on that right now. We've done that with mobile technology over the last three years. We've created a whole initiative around branding Atlanta as a global hub of mobile technology development. Because AT&T Mobility is headquartered here, and Cisco has a very big presence, we collaborated with those companies. And then we were approached by some of the big brands that are here, uh, Coca-Cola being one of them. And I, when Coca-Cola came to us three and a half years ago and said Atlanta has this enormous opportunity in mobile technology, I couldn't understand why does a soda manufacturer care about mobile technology. But as we got into it, and I understood that, you know, if they can just have me tap my phone against a machine in, in uh, Singapore or France or Germany or South Africa, you know, it's much easier just to have a, a mobile payment transaction and manage that than to deal with lots of foreign currencies and, and coins and, and dollars. Uh, so we, we got all the big brands on board, we got the mobile technology companies on board, the university system, and since then we've been able to help companies like AirWatch in Sandy Springs ramp up very quickly to over a thousand people on Perimeter Center West. The, uh, Alan DeBeery, who if you haven't seen him speak or heard him speak, he's, a, he's uh, just a fantastic person, a, a great business person, and a great supporter of Metro Atlanta. Uh, he's been so uh, gracious to promote Atlanta wherever he goes, but he benefited so much from this initiative by being around the table at our task force meeting, sitting shoulder to shoulder, 
with Ralph De La Vega from AT&T Mobility and Jonathan Lacombe from Verizon Wireless, uh, he was able to start doing business with these companies and doing business with Coca-Cola and making AirWatch more successful. And then he sold it to VMware for one and a half billion dollars a couple of years ago. And VMware is doubling down in Atlanta and they're going to continue to grow and expand here. And AirWatch is a real great success story of what's come out of some of our initiatives at the Metro Atlanta Chamber, drilling down on these specific industry clusters like mobile technology and now what we'll get into with financial technology. So, you know, some of the other initiatives related to mobility, there's a, the biggest show in the world for this technology is called Mobile World Congress. It's in Barcelona, Spain every year. We've had a presence there for the last three years, uh, branding Atlanta, marketing Atlanta. We created an Atlanta-centric event called Mobility Live. And we've done that for the last two years in Midtown, and we'll have our, our third Mobility Live coming up. So I, I talked about Venture Atlanta and how we've been doing that for eight years, and it's grown, and we attract 800 people a year to Venture Atlanta. With Mobility Live, we're having a very similar experience. So I've, uh, you can see I get kind of excited about the technology sectors that we drill into, and because there's so much positive result that comes from all these efforts. And it, you know, one really interesting aspect of these efforts to drill down in these technology sectors is it's really led by the private sector. I mean, we are the facilitator that, that turns the ideas into reality, but it's really you know, someone from AT&T and someone from Coca-Cola and someone from AirWatch that are sitting around the table coming up with these ideas and suggestions saying you, you should do this, this, and that, and then we, we run with those ideas and make them happen. So some of our other initiatives within economic development, I, I spoke about our economic impact model already. Um, a, a big area for us is global trade, and we have uh, Jorge Fernandez, who runs global trade for us, is here in the room, and John Woodward. Uh, under Jorge's leadership, we covered the entire planet. We are all over the world marketing Atlanta as a place to do business year in and year out, attracting foreign direct investment to Atlanta. Uh, an example that, that uh, I'm very impressed by is, you know, Jorge has spent a lot of time in India over the last 10 years focused on that market. And we've developed great relationships with companies like Wipro and Infosys and Novellus, who have all expanded in Atlanta over the last uh, eight or ten years or so, creating you know, thousands of jobs between those three companies. So that, that's an example of the foreign direct investment work that we do. Another big aspect of the global trade work is helping Atlanta companies to export their products. And Rick Hubler here at the Chamber spends his time with Jen Yoon uh, meeting with companies around Metro Atlanta, assessing their readiness to do business overseas, and then ultimately advising them on how they can be successful uh, doing business outside of the U.S. And then lastly, just another example of what we do, uh, a lot of people don't realize we have the Atlanta Sports Council that's uh, part of the chamber and housed in this building. The role of the Sports Council, under the leadership of Dan Corso, is to attract major sports events to Atlanta, whether it's uh, the Final Four or a Super Bowl or uh, WrestleMania, whatever your favorite sport may happen to be or entertainment. Uh, Dan and his team work to attract those events to Atlanta, and the economic impact generated from those events coming here is very significant. So I, I, I talked a lot about our focus on entrepreneurs and innovation, and it's something that we're, we're spending a lot of time on and we're seeing a lot of great results. I gave some examples of some of the industries that we drill down on, and I, I talked about Mobility Live and Venture Atlanta. Uh, some other examples of what we've done, uh, if you've driven around Tech Square and Midtown, and, and as you see the development of the Synergy Building and uh, Georgia Tech's plans for the High Performance Computing Center, the, the Biltmore Building at almost 100% uh, lease right now. 
uh, NCR moving their corporate headquarters to Tech Square. Uh, that has become a hotbed for innovation. And we've seen companies like Panasonic, Home Depot, ThyssenKrupp, GE, AT&T, they have all opened R&D centers in the Synergy building at Tech Square to benefit from being at Georgia Tech's campus, interacting with the students and faculty at Georgia Tech, also interacting with all the startup companies that are in the Advanced Technology Development Center on the second floor of the building, and interacting with each other. It's creating this ecosystem of innovation in Midtown that we, we can see in other cities like Kendall Square and Cambridge uh, in the Boston market. Uh, New York City had a major initiative on Roosevelt Island to attract uh, Cornell to build a major innovation district there. Of course, uh, San Francisco and Silicon Valley. What Georgia, what's happening at Georgia Tech at Tech Square right now, that, that's our knowledge district. And we're seeing a lot of success. And I think we're going to see a rapid acceleration of that in the coming years to the point where uh, I view the, the uh, ground zero of that being in Midtown. But as we see David Cummings open Atlanta Tech Village in Buckhead and organizations like Rome open co-working space in Alpharetta and Dunwoody, uh, what, what's going on at Pont City Market, uh, th there's a lot of momentum around that right now. So I, I've spent most of my time talking about what we do in economic development, but uh, we can't sell Atlanta unless we have a good product to sell. And that's our public policy group spends their time making sure that we have the right product to sell. So I, I talked about the transportation bill. I've talked about our competitive business climate. Uh, our team is very active advocating for the business policies in, in those areas of education, transportation, water, innovation. Uh, and we've had a lot of success doing that. Um, and we're just, I would say with the transportation bill, I mentioned that the House passed a $1 billion legislation package. We're waiting to see what the Senate is going to do with that. So to the extent that any of you have a relationship with your state senators, uh, and you happen to be talking to them, I would encourage them to uh, support a major transportation bill on the Senate. And the, the last general thing that I'll talk about with respect to what we're doing at the Chamber is selling our story. And I mentioned our president, Hala Modelmog, her background is related to marketing and, and uh, comes from the private sector. So she's engaged in creating a new branding initiative for Metro Atlanta. We have hired BBDO to uh, put a plan together and put the story together. We're working with all of the local communities in our 29-county Metro Atlanta area. And so you'll be hearing more in the coming months about a major branding campaign spearheaded by us uh, to market Metro Atlanta all over the world. So I've run through just sort of the general overview and, and what we're doing at the Metro Atlanta Chamber on our public policy side and the economic development side. But I, with the uh, five or 10 minutes that I have remaining before q and I just wanted to give a, you know, an example using uh, Mercedes-Benz USA, tying that into what we actually do in economic development at the Chamber. So I'll back up a, a few years. We, we spend a lot of time marketing the area outside of Georgia. You know, I, I'm, Jorge and his team are all over the world. Uh, I spend my time traveling to Chicago, New York, Boston, you know, all domestic travel, meeting with consultants that represent companies and meeting with end users themselves to promote Atlanta and promote opportunities in Atlanta. So. You know, we have developed a great relationship in Chicago with some consultants at Jones Lang LaSalle over the years. And they reached out to us back in June. And typically, you know, you won't be surprised to hear when prospects come to us, they're confidential. We, we typically don't know who the company is. Uh, we, we get a lot of these requests for information. And th that was the case uh, with Mercedes Benz. So from, 
from the period of June through September, we were answering lots of questions about Metro Atlanta, about uh, the industries that we have here, the education system, the transportation network. Uh, and then it's, things started to get serious around September when their head of real estate came for a visit and uh, their head of human resources came for a visit. And we structured two days uh, for that team in Atlanta. And we, every time we work on a project, we work with the Georgia Department of Economic Development, which is the state's economic development agency. And we work with Georgia Power, who has a, a fantastic economic development group. Our three organizations as a team support prospects like we had with Mercedes-Benz. So they, you know, we all work together for this visit in September to show their staff, you know, the, the best of Atlanta. And so, you know, we, we must have done an okay job because they brought their entire leadership team back right before Halloween, uh, including Steve Cannon, their CEO, and their general counsel, and, and their all of their C-suite of employees. And for that two days that their executive leadership team was in Atlanta, we did everything from an educational panel where we had Robert Avosa, the superintendent of Fulton County Schools. We had a representative of the independent school system. We had Bud Peterson from Georgia Tech talk about the education system in Atlanta. We had Georgia Department of Transportation, MARTA, and Perimeter CID talk about the transportation network. We hosted um, a dinner for their executive leadership team, and we had the CEO of Delta and we had the CEO of UPS uh, attend the dinner and give personal testimonials for what it's like to do business in Atlanta. Uh, you know, we showed them a great couple days and answered every possible question they could have. They were really viewing this as they're looking for somewhere to make their home for the next 50 years. And they know that no city is perfect. And they didn't want me from the Metro Atlanta Chamber telling them that, that everything is perfect here. So they, they wanted to hear from the business leadership and the educational leadership, you know, the, and the transportation leadership saying that, you know, we know we have traffic in Atlanta, but here's our plan to address that in the coming years. Uh, and I will, I'll conclude my story by saying, the final speaker we had was Arthur Blank. We took them over to the uh, Falcons uh, sales office for their suites. And Arthur spoke to them for about 30 minutes. And he said a lot of things that made me cringe about Atlanta. Uh, I, was, I was a little nervous when he was talking because he said, if you don't like traffic, then go to Raleigh. Raleigh would be much better for you. And I, <laughs> I got really nervous when he said that. But I think it really resonated with them because they, you know, like I said, they didn't want somebody saying that everything was perfect here. You know, what Arthur said was, you know, I created Home Depot in Atlanta. I made Home Depot successful here. I was able to buy the Atlanta Falcons here. Uh, Atlanta has made me successful and it'll make you successful. And yes, we have some problems here. But all in all, this is the perfect place for your business for the next 50 years. And uh, that, that just, uh, I, I like that story a lot. It resonates with me. Uh, I hope it does with you also. And I think that was a big part of why Mercedes felt so comfortable selecting Metro Atlanta. Of course, you know, the, the state did a fantastic job offering some financial incentives. Uh, local communities did the same. So, you know, Economic development is really all about working together as close partners. And the, the state has a very significant role to play. The private sector has a role to play through the chamber. Uh, our utility has a role to play. But it's, when you look at it in total, it's selling these companies on, you know, yes, our schools are fine. Yes, our transportation network is, is good and it's improving. And uh, yes, Metro Atlanta Chamber will help you to make to have a successful business over the next 50 years. And so it, you know, it was a great way to start the year in January when Steve Cannon announced that they were going to Sandy Springs with their corporate headquarters. And they will, they will have 800 direct jobs and about 150 contract employees uh, in Sandy Springs at their site. And it's a, a great brand for us to have in Metro Atlanta. 
uh, and it's generated a lot of buzz and excitement from other companies that are thinking about coming to Atlanta. So I, I hope that I've given you a really good overview, big picture of what we do at the Metro Atlanta Chamber, and then you know on the tactical level in our economic development group, what we do and how we work with our partners. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Yes. I read that Home Depot article, and I, I think that the article might have been a little misleading. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, what I saw was there was an online article saying that Home Depot is demanding $200 million in incentives or they would move. And then I saw a corrected version of that article the next day that uh, Cobb County had issued a $200 million bond uh, to Home Depot. So I think, you know, I don't always believe what I read in the paper. I've learned that a long time ago. Uh, development authorities issue bonds. They're called lease purchase bonds or bonds for title that provide a property tax abatement over some period of time in that jurisdiction. And, and that's what Home Depot is applying for. I, I don't think it was a strong arm tactic by Home Depot to hold up Cobb County or any other county. So I think the article is a little misleading. I think that many of our competitors uh, in fast-growing regions uh, have had the same challenge that we have. When you, when you add a lot of people to an existing transportation network, you have to invest in your transportation network. Uh, I've had the good fortune of traveling to a lot of our competitive cities, uh, and I think that our peers are struggling with traffic issues also. Austin, uh, Dallas. Uh, Nashville, Charlotte. Um, the good news for us is that it appears positive for our transportation bill. And I think it's critical that the Senate, you know, pass a bill in addition to what the House passed. And hopefully, you know, that'll get us to where we need to be going forward. Kurt? Outside of From what I see, it's workforce, labor pool, is by far the top issue. I mean, when you look at the cost of labor versus the cost of real estate, I mean, you would know better than I would, but uh, you know, I guess depending on the nature of the facility, it could, you know, labor could be as much as 80% of the cost of operating the business. So they want to make sure that they can get as many people as they need as quickly as possible for as little money as possible. Um, and that's what we face when we're competing with other cities. And so making sure that we have the pipeline of talent, it's not just about what we have today. So it's, it's important to work through with the K through 12 system to make sure that we have STEM education being implemented, working with the college and university network. And I think that we have a real advantage in higher education. From what I've experienced in New York and Massachusetts, although there are are some of the best colleges and universities in those states, the interaction between the business community and the universities is not nearly to the extent that we have in Georgia. The fact that every university in Georgia has a, an economic development full-time point person to be a liaison between the business community and the, the university to help them navigate through the bureaucracy to get to the resource that they need is a huge advantage. And the HOPE scholarship is also a huge distinction and advantage and competitive factor for us. I mean, when Mercedes heard that their relocating employees with, with children could be eligible for the HOPE scholarship, they became very excited about that. And, and companies, all companies we work with become very excited about HOPE. So I think, you know, making sure that HOPE stays funded, making sure that we have a strong K-12 through school system, and that our university system continues to collaborate closely with businesses, uh, it will be a huge advantage for us. Yes.
we have some programs. Uh, one program that I can think of is Year Up Atlanta. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Year Up Atlanta, but it's a fantastic nonprofit that takes high school age children from uh, undeveloped uh, neighborhoods that have suffered from a lack of investment, and it, it puts them through an IT training program. They're located right in Midtown in the uh, 730 Peachtree Building, and they've been there for years, and I've seen a lot of great success come from that program. Uh, so I, I would point to that as, as one example that we have, but, it, but it's something that we do need. It's called Year Up Atlanta. Sure. Happy to do it. My yeah, pleasure. Definitely. Thank you, Greg, and uh, very, very informative. We really appreciate your thoughts and also all that the, the chamber does. I think, you know, we that was just a very brief overview of all that they do. And for almost everyone in this room, their efforts are what we all depend on to make sure that Atlanta has a very bright light shining on it around the world. And they do a very good job at that, along with a lot of other economic development departments. Uh, I think it's important, too, to make this a commercial about all chambers. It's not just Metro Atlanta Chamber, although we're here today. But wherever you're doing business, reach out to your local develop economic development groups. Uh, the university economic development groups, as well as your chambers, because these are tools that I think go unused by 80% of us. And it really is important to be a member, to be active, and to utilize them so that they, they know, too, how to better serve us. Uh, thank you all today for being here. It would not be without the effort of a great board of directors that serves with me. So thank you for the directors that are here today. Your service is huge, an unpaid job, and we very much appreciate that work. Katie Sintel, who is our basically our boss, who does put everything together for us. So thank you, Katie. And then our next program is coming up May the 14th. We'll be back at the terraces, and Michael Reeves and Leon, Leo, um, I can never say the last name well, but Leo is helping put that together, and uh, it's going to be a very good program coming up, so we'll have some emails and some um, information about that out probably within the next two weeks, and again, be mindful that we are doing everything we can to absolutely increase our ability to communicate better to you through a hired PR agency, as well as just getting some templates and processes in place. So if you ever see something that we're lacking in terms of communications or that you think we can do better, reach out and let us know. Don't keep it to yourself. We do not get our feelings hurt. Again, thank you guys. If there's any visitors in the room, which I know there are, we're thanking very much for you being here and for the folks bringing you here today. If you want to get involved with the chapter, See Jason Holland, our membership director, or myself, or anyone in the room that looks like a director, and we will help you get involved. So thank you, guys. Enjoy your day. Thank you.